In August, um, Bill Nye the Science Guy released a video pleading with adults to stop teaching creationism to children. Now I have to tell you, I don't keep up with the sciences, and I took one course in Chinese medicine in college. <laughs> and as a Catholic, I take for granted that Genesis and evolution don't need to be in conflict, right? So I was surprised that in 2012, there's this video talking about creationism. You know, why do we still need to defend cre uh, evolution uh, today, a scientific fact? Well, I think we need to defend it for the very simple reason that uh, there are many opponents of evolution who are trying very hard to influence the way that biology is taught in our public schools, this happens in many places around the country, and actually are telling young people, and this happens in churches and in public forums as well, that evolution is contradictory to their faith. And I can just give you two or three really quick examples. Uh, a few years ago in northern Kentucky, a $27 million creation museum opened. Um, it draws in the neighborhood of 300,000 visitors a year, and young people visiting the Creation Museum are told that basically evolution is a flat-out lie. And they're told a number of nonsensical things about natural history. They're told, for example, that the Earth is only a few thousand years old, and that all living organisms, including, for example, human beings and dinosaurs, and trilobites all existed at one point side by side. Now, there isn't a shred of geological evidence for any of that, but that's what young people are being told. It's also worth noting that right now, the country is in the process of nationwide adopting a series of brand new science education standards. These are gonna be called the, the Next Generation Science Standards. They're in the process of development. Several draft copies have been released, and they're very good. As from my point of view as a science educator, I liked, uh, I liked the standards very much, and I liked their goals. But it turns out that in several states, and the two that I can name right away are Oklahoma and Georgia, uh, movements have arisen to persuade those states to adopt everything in the next generation standards except evolution, climate change, and the Big Bang origin of the universe. So we continue to face opposition in terms of effective science teaching uh, in various places around the country. That's why evolution needs to be defended. And I think it also needs to be defended from those people who argue that evolution is somehow a contradiction of faith. Because I think that's a, a danger, not just to science, but to the faith community as well. Now, even with all these um, oppositions, um, do you think that evolution is here to stay? Is it struggling to survive? No, evolution isn't struggling. It's certainly not struggling within the scientific community. Um, it's fair to say that evolution is not controversial at all within the scientific community. Uh, we simply take it for granted. The theory of evolution in its modern form was first published 153 years ago when Charles Darwin produced his monumental book on the origin of species. And it's worth noting that in that century and a half, I can't think of any scientific idea that anyone has tried harder to disprove than evolution. And after 150 years of intensive effort to try to disprove evolution, it's still here. And it's not just still here. It forms the central core of all the biological sciences. Evolution is the tool that we use today to make sense of anatomy, physiology, molecular biology, and genomics, all of which are very vital and important and growing fields. So evolution is right at the center of how we understand living, living things. It's not struggling in the scientific sense, but it does face conflict in the popular culture and popular imagination, and especially in the educational community. And that's one of the reasons why I and many, many other scientists find themselves compelled to defend it from time to time. If anti-evolution positions are so difficult to defend, 
how do anti-evolution movements manage to defend themselves so effectively? Well, sometimes they defend themselves by slogans. So, for example, one slogan that I've actually seen uh, on the message boards outside of churches is, if we evolve from monkeys, why are monkeys still here? Yeah. And, of course, that's an easy slogan to make. Um, another one that I've heard uh, in public life, actually, from very high government officials is that in educational terms, if we tell kids that they are evolved from animals, then they're going to act like animals. Yeah. So, so part of it is sloganeering. Uh, another part of it, quite frankly, is a kind of misrepresentation. Um, it's very common to claim that the evidence for evolution has been falsified or fabricated or otherwise made up. Because every now and then, within the scientific community, there are indeed acts of academic dishonesty. Um, in every scientific field, you will find people who have fabricated data in order to get ahead. In fact, that's not just true in science. It's true in any academic field. It's even true in theology, as yes, I'm sure you realize. Um, but um, a few, but these instances of falsified data or fabricated results, uh, science works in a such a way that it checks its own results over and over again. And without exception, um, these falsehoods have been exposed by the scientific community itself. Because science, whatever its faults, is enormously self-critical. So that's a second way. And then the third way um, is by picking small areas, and there's lots of them actually, in which we don't have a complete understanding of how the evolutionary process produced what we see today. Mm -hmm. And saying, well, evolution hasn't explained this, and it hasn't explained that, and it hasn't explained the other thing. Now, my reaction as a scientist, when I'm confronted by that, is that's correct. We have not explained everything in science. And the way I would put it, is on the day when we have a complete scientific explanation of everything, it will be time to close every department of evolutionary biology in the world yeah. because everything will have been figured out. Yeah. Needless to say, I don't expect to see that day in my lifetime or even in lifetimes to follow. And people expect science and even theology to explain everything to them. Yeah, so and it's say we wouldn't need them if everything is explainable. Right, and, and, and it's worth noting that science is necessarily incomplete. And this doesn't just apply to evolution, it applies to everything in science. You will discover, um, with just a little bit of cursory inspection, that there's very active research going on in theoretical physics, in celestial mechanics, in organic chemistry. All of these fields are vital. And why is there research going on? The answer is because there are still unanswered questions. But one thing science is very good at is showing which ideas are wrong. And the scientific revolution 400 years ago began, with, uh, began at a time when most natural scientists thought that the Earth was eh, maybe six or 7,000 years old and that all geological formations had been formed during a global worldwide flood. And very quickly, they discovered that the evidence in the Earth's surface of geology itself uh, wasn't consistent with that view. And this was true, I should mention, about a hundred years before Charles Darwin published the theory of evolution. So well before anyone was thinking of evolution, the scientific community had begun to discover that this very simple picture of the Earth didn't fit that life had changed over time and that there was a great age to the antiquity of the Earth that was consistent with the process of living species changing over time. What Darwin did was to take all that evidence and put it together into a plausible theory of how these changes might have occurred. 